Tonda. Hey, Andrea. So, Jessica. My goodness. How y'all doing? We're going to get started. I'm sorry. My, uh... I might blow my neighbors out today. I'm home. Listening to Matt Redman, Why Does the Sky... Uh, my godson, who also attends church with me, Tristan, sung that last night at church, and it was just so, so powerful. So welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Lakeisha, the July 4th edition. We are um, at home. The station is closed today, and so we at the house today, but I I, I still got to get a word today. <laughs> I still got to get a word today. And I asked the Lord to give me a scripture so back of that up, and he did. <laughs> and I was like, um, just understanding like my work, because people are always like, do you take time off? And I do take time off, but I take time off also. There we go. I take time off when God tells me to take time off. Um, and it's funny because when Jesus was dealing with um healing the lame man, the Samaritans challenged him and harassed him and said to him, you healed him on a Sabbath. And Jesus comes back in John 5, 16 and says, my father is always working. And so am I. So my father is always working and so am I. So good morning. Hey, y'all. It's July 4th, Independence Day for the United States of America. And we are in this thing. And we are going to share. We're going to finish on this trek and this journey. Do me a favor. Go share the video right now. Put the video in someone else's hand. That's good, Paula. Thank you. Thank you for that. Word from the Lord, me too. Like my study life does not change because it's a holiday and people are like, oh, I'm sleeping in today. Do you know I love to wake up in the morning and study the word of God early and fresh in the morning because I've learned that that's when the witches, the warlocks and all of them are praying their prayers as well and releasing their spells and in their hex and plotting against our lives and plotting against the country and all of that other stuff. And so it's so important for those of us that are in the kingdom to be guarded and girded and ready. And what I've found is if you get in a proper amount of sleep and God's grace is on a thing, my God, that's a word for somebody. <laughs> and God's grace is on a thing. And then guess what? Um, you will have balance. People always ask me, how do you do what you do? And I always want to, I don't want to seem sarcastic or strange, but I'm always saying it's God. And the reason that I say it's God, it's because his grace is on absolutely everything that I do. So my energy levels are really high. I feel good 98% of the time, 99% of the time. I feel balanced because his words, Ecclesiastes 7, 18 tells me that those of us that trust in the Lord, my God, this is going to help somebody today. Those of us that trust, rest, and operate in God's grace, they, they have a balanced life. Um, and so I just take his word as my promises. And those are the things that's balance that balance me out. And even when I'm in my worst place and even when things are crazy in my life or it seems like it's not adding up, my trust and my hope is in what the word of God says, because I know God is not a God that he can lie. Like I know God, is, it makes no sense. And I taught this. I taught this way back. It makes no sense for you to serve him for you to beg him, for you to plead him, for to say you trust him, and then you not trust in his word, and you not see the benefit of his word. And so 
I rely, I've learned to rely and trust in the word. That's what gives me the extra energy. And then finding balance and eating right and exercising and doing the natural things as well and staying, staying stress free. And I don't deal with a whole bunch of complicated uh, things, complicated people. Uh, I know for a fact relationships are not supposed to be complicated. So anytime, anytime my relationships start getting complicated, I've learned to pull back and I've learned to pray and I've learned to release people and I've learned to let people stay who want to stay and let people go who want to go like it's just so much balance in that and what i found is that god god then orchestrates according to what the word says and i've learned to pray for people and pray people through i've learned how powerful and promising prayer is does this make sense i hope this helps someone because people always ask how do you do it how does it happen for you how how do you how do you keep so positive? How do you keep so encouraged? How, how do you, I stay faithful to the things of God, consistent in the things of God. Um, and it works. <laughs> it works like it works. The word works. I was a hot mess. I've even seen my life transform over the last six months. Like, I don't want to make this all about me. I'm just trying to give you the things that I know that I have applicably used in my life and I've seen God move and I've seen what God has done and I've seen him working and I've gotten revelation in how powerful his word is. So I hope that helps someone who's in just a strange situation. And it doesn't mean everything in my life has worked out. I promise there are things that try to come against me. I can't preach the way that I do. I can't teach the way that I do and the enemy not try to come against me things come against me all the time. And then there are some spaces that I've had to work things out over in my life and I've had to grow in the word, but learning to take the word literal, learning to get revelation for the word and learning to apply the word to my life has made the sure difference and being inconsistent. And can I tell you something and not making excuses for my shortcomings not making excuses for my shortcomings and not allowing my shortcomings to be there and dwell for a little bit. Those are the things that have made the difference. Those are the things that send the devil to flee. Those are the things that resist him because he doesn't keep bothering me about that thing. He doesn't keep bothering me about that thing. He'll he'll go go in another direction. Y'all ready for the word? Let me do a few. Hey y'all. Hey my Instagram family today. Hey Facebook. Hey y'all. Hey hey Olive. Hey Paula. Hey Teresa. Hey Salome. How y'all doing? Hey Melissa. I see y'all this morning. What's up, Kim Brown? Kim Rochelle Barry. Hey Sharon. Miss you, Andrea. What's up, Connie Franklin? Miss you too. Uh, Teresa Skinner. Hey, Robin Ray. Good morning to y'all. Y'all do me a favor. Go share the video right now. Hey, don't forget this Saturday we have Feed the Streets. So if you, because can I tell you something? If you, if you or anyone else need a meal, we want to feed you and take care of you. This Saturday we'll be at 1701 Scott. We open the grill up. We'll pack it up for you and you can come grab you a sack. Um, it's a hot, it's hot food. Um, usually we have some fruit, there's water, but we're not going to leave you without a meal. And sometimes the first of the month is very difficult for individuals, especially when they've paid all their bills and done absolutely everything else. So if you need a meal this Saturday, we'll be in place this Saturday uh, for you to pick up a sack, grab, grab a sack. I got people on site. We'll be praying for you if you need prayer, if you just need us to be in faith and a point of contact for you. We'll definitely be on the scene for you this Saturday. And people are like, oh, I told you guys, it's the holiday. I don't, God don't ever stop working. God don't ever stop working. I love that Jesus John 5 and 16, the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking the Sabbath rules, for being according to protocol. And Jesus replied, my father is always working. And so am I. And so am I. And so is Lakeisha. And so is LMJ Ministries. So we'll be available Saturday if you need to play. Ala, thanks for sharing and inviting everyone in. I really, really appreciate you. It means absolutely everything to me, but it more so it means everything for the kingdom. So let's get in the word today. We've been in John 5, and I'm going to share some strategies with you today. 
we're going to let the Holy Spirit lead this thing. I actually taught Bible study at my church last night, and I appreciate the apostle and thank them for the opportunity um, to be in the pulpit last night. Uh, and so I want to share some things. We were still in the same journey. We were still in the same track. And I want to share a few strategies with you this morning, especially for those of you that are in a really tough place, especially for those of you that seem like you've been in the same place for a long time. I just want to drop a word on you this morning. Last night, I called it trouble in the water and I showed them how to trouble their water. So let's pray. But I need to pray something specific. Um, this morning, the Lord woke me up and he told me somebody was believing God for some equipment. Um, you need some equipment, something you need for this next phase or for your ministry or for your business. He told me, he said, somebody was in need of and some equipment. And I know what it's like. Um, and I'm just going to extend my faith for you. And you extend your faith for us because there's some things we still need in the ministry. Um but I want to extend my faith for whatever equipment it is you need. The Lord pressed that upon, upon, upon my heart today. I have such a heart for entrepreneurs. I have such a heart for those of you that are trying to get about it and get it. So I want to stand in the gap for your equipment today. We're also going to stand in the gap for our lost loved ones who are not saved or who have walked away from Christ, either they're hurt, either they're bruised, either they're upset. We're going to pray for them also this morning, but I definitely want to pray for whoever person. When God gives a word of knowledge about something uh, and starts saying somebody needs some equipment, they may be on now, um, they may be on later, that they need some equipment that he knows they need the equipment, and what he wants to do is for us to faith for it. And everybody connected to this devotional this morning, get in agreement and be in faith for that person to get the equipment they need. It's 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 important to them. Oh, good morning, Cassandra Steele. Um, it's important to what they need in this next season. It could be a laptop. It could be a machine. It could be whatever it is. But somebody's in need of equipment today. That was the word from the Lord. And God shall supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. And I want to talk to you about praying the word. So we just, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this morning. Thank you for the word for this morning. We thank you, Father God, that your word is the truth, my God. That your word has the final say. So your word is the beginning and your word is the end. And we thank you, Father God, from a power on high. And this morning, Lord God, we just lift your name, my God. Lift your name of your name. We just praise your name. We just lift your name up over all the earth. We thank you, Father God. There is no other name. I don't know. There is no other name. The great I am. There is no other name. Jehovah Jireh. There is no other name. Jehovah Shalom. There is no other name. Jehovah Sabot. There is no other name. Jehovah Sadiknu. There is no other name through all the earth. And we just bless your name. And we just praise your name. And we just lift your name on high. My God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for being King of Kings. We thank you for being Lord of Lords. We thank you for being our way. We thank you, Father God, for being the Rose of Sharon. We thank you for being the Bomb in Gilead. We thank you for being Waymaker. My God, we thank you for being Restorer. We thank you for revitalization. We thank you for refreshing us. We thank you for renewing us. My God. God, we thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We lift your name on high this morning. We say thank you, Father God. Father God, right now we stand in the gap for all our loved ones that are lost, for those that have lost their ways, for those that have not come to know you as Christ. Father God, and we pray Ephesians 1, 15 through 17. We thank you the eyes of their understanding for the hope of who you call them to be in Christ Jesus is opening and manifesting in their life right now. We thank you, Father God, today is the day that you put the laborers in the field and that they're coming in contact with exactly who they need to come in contact with, Lord God. We thank you, today is the day that they're gonna receive salvation, that they're gonna be able to discern your word, that they're gonna have revelation knowledge of who they are in Christ, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the backslider. We thank you, Father God, for those 
that are lost and we stand in the gap for them and we call them home, Father God, from the north, south, east, and west, Lord God. We thank you today. They're having their Paul encounter, that they're having an encounter with you, Father God, right now on the road to Damascus. Father God, that you are the light. Father God, that you are showing them their way. My God, we break all strongholds, all demonic principalities off their life right now in the name of Jesus that has been trying to hold them. My God, my God. God, my God, hold them captive. And we thank you today, Jesus, that you go set the captive free. My God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that they're coming to Christ today, that they're hungering and thirsting after you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that you're giving a heart of flesh, Lord God. Right now, to those that have had a stony heart, Lord God, that they're sensitive to your word, Father God. And Father, we pray right now for those that have been experiencing church hurt. My God, we thank you, Lord God, that they know longer walk in church, Lord God, but that they're being redeemed and refreshed and you bring them to a place of safety, my God, because their safety is in you, that you bring them to the safe, a place, a place of safety. Lord God. Now, Father God, we encamp the angels around us, Lord God. We thank you that the angels are encamped around us, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that they are protecting us, Lord God. We thank you that you are providing for us. Now, Father God, we stand in the gap for the person that needs the equipment, Lord God, whatever it is that they need for their business, Lord God. We're standing in the gap for them right now, Lord God. For you said that you would leave us in need of nothing, Father God. You said you would daily load us with benefits, Father God. My God, you said put the word of the Lord in. You told us to remind you, Father God, in Isaiah of things, Lord God, remind you of your word, Lord God. So, Father God, we're reminding you today that you said you would supply every need, my God, every need according to your riches and glory. Lord God, you told us to ask, seek, and knock. So, we're knocking on the door, Lord God. Open up the opportunity. Give them the provision, my God. Give them the provision, Lord God, or either send the supplies, send the equipment, send the rain, Lord God, send the rain, Lord God, send the rain, Lord God, my God. God, we thank you the angels are encamped around us. We thank you the angels are camped around us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God, for daily loading the bus with benefits. We thank you for a fresh anointing, a fresh wind blow. My God, that as we connect with you on this devotional, Father God, that as we connect with you, that we are feeling and being refreshed. My God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I thank you that the angels are encamped around my God. God, I thank you. My God, I bless you. My God, I praise you. My God, I lift you up. My God, I glorify you. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. So if you're just logging on, we were praying for someone who needs some equipment. The Lord gave a word of knowledge for that. It was just like someone needs some equipment either for their business, uh, for them to further their education. Uh, maybe it's a laptop, maybe it's some supplies, whatever it is that you need. God shall supply all your needs. You can bank on it. We're standing in the gap for you and we're believing God that you get what you need for this next season in your life. God is not going to leave you ill-equipped and God also has a standard of excellence. I taught that in Tuesday night's Bible study. So God is not going to um, have you out here half having or doing or having what you need. That's just not the kind of God we serve. That's just not the kind of God we serve. He's not going to have you ill-equipped. When I started this ministry, I had nothing. Um, I didn't even have a proper laptop. I was just using my cell phone. I'm going to be the witness today. I was just using my cell phone and God began to sow. People began to sow into my life. My sister sent me a brand new MacBook. I just began to believe God. I got with my prayer partner and I told her, I said, these are the things that I need if I'm going to be successful in this. And every time I opened my mouth and stood for something, something came. Even my washer and dryer at my house. I tell people my house is the house that love built. Um, if you don't know my story, I was a I'm widowed um, and I lost income after my husband died. Like I'm just telling you, I'm just giving you a little bit of testimony, and I hope this testimony helps you. I lost income after my husband died. Um, I had several financial transitions that I went through. I wound up closing my nonprofit organization. Just all kinds of things have occurred in my life, but 
I've watched God be faithful. And so when I was standing in need of things, I would write them in my abundant supply list. I would talk to my prayer partner and I would say to her, look, I need a new laptop. Uh, I need a new camera. The other day, I believed God for a camera a couple of weeks ago. One of my sons blessed me with a new camera because I wanted to represent the kingdom well, right? I wanted to rep the, represent the kingdom well. So I'm telling you, if you're the person and you're standing in need of anything, God will begin to slowly supply those things. I've been in need of some stuff and just put it out in the atmosphere and God will speak a word into someone's heart and they will deliver and bring you exactly what he needs. Luke 638 tells us this. That's why I tell you to keep giving, even when it's strange, even when you cannot, even look when it looks like your finances are funny, that's why I tell you to keep operating in kingdom principles anyway. And I'm not telling you kingdom principles according to Lakeisha. I'm telling you kingdom principles according to what Jesus said. He said, given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, runneth over, shall men give into your bosom. So even if you don't have a lot and you continue to sow and you continue to tithe and you continue to honor kingdom principles, kingdom is going to honor you. My God, that's a word for someone. Kingdom is going to honor you. Stay the course. Stay steadfast. And what I usually see is people fall off because they don't think they have enough and they don't operate in kingdom principles. Stay the course and kingdom is going to work for you. I've seen it manifest in my own life. My apartment is the house that God built everything in here. God blessed me with. And I just stood steadfast in it. So that's that's an encouragement for you. If you think God can't provide for you, especially for those of us that left to go preach the gospel for God's sake. So we've been talking about, we've been talking about, um, We've been on this course in John 5, and I needed to give that encouragement. Thank you for that, Holy Spirit. He just told me, he said, you needed to give that encouragement to someone today. And I needed to give that encouragement to someone today. So I hope that keeps you encouraged, that you don't think God will forget you or has forgotten you or has forgotten about what he said. Um, you don't have to make anything happen. And that's the mistake a lot of people made. They try to make things happen on their own. You just got to get in position. And I'm going to give you some strategies actually this morning. You just got to get in position and you just got to stay true and you just got to stay in faith and you just got to believe God and you just got to pray the word and you just got to press into this thing. And it is not you begging God. It's not you begging God. You don't have to beg God for anything, but you do need to operate in the strategies that take the relief and pressure off you. The Lord said, cast all your cares. My God, because he cares for you. He said, my yoke is easy, right? My burden is light. He said, yoke up with me. Give it to me. Give me the problems. Give me the circumstance. Give me the situation. Trust in my word. Act in my word. And I'm going to do exactly what I what he said I do. You just need to extend your faith. You just need to stay full of faith. You need to trust in God more than you trust in the system. You need to trust in God more than you trust in the water. My God, you need to trust in God. You need to trust in him. You need to remember the trust is him. And we're seeing this. He led right on into that thing. He led right on into that thing. And we're seeing this as we are following Jesus. And right now, Jesus is at the pool of Beth. Esther, and we're seeing him, and he's encountered the lame man. And even though the lame man was trusting in a system, my God, it's not in a system. It's not in a system. It's in God. It's in the word of God. It's in the living, active word of God. It's not in the system. It's not in the people you know. It's trusting God is his very word, trusting that he won't fail you. And I know some of you are like, what if it looks like it's delayed? Or what if it looks like, or it didn't happen before? I'm telling you, you just need to trouble the water. I taught this a little bit last night. You just need to trouble the water. See, they were waiting on an angel to trouble the water. They didn't need an angel to trouble the water. They just needed an encounter with God. And I'm going to tell you the same thing. You don't need an angel to trouble the water. You just need an encounter with God. And so there's a way that we encounter God. We have to invoke the presence of God. We have to operate in kingdom principles. See, a lot of y'all been trying to break through protocol to get what you need. You've been trying to break protocol. You've been trying to get what you need on your own. You've been trying to get what you need your way. You've been trying 
trying to get what you need and break outside what God is requiring of you, thinking just if I do a little bit, it's enough. And these strategies and what Jesus has been saying to us is fully necessary for us to walk into the fullness of what God called us to do, to walk in the fullness of what God did. So I want to give you these things today. And we've talked about these things multiple, multiple times, but I'm praying today that you get revelation today. So we know we're at the pool of Bethesda. We know that um, Jesus is there. We know that John is the recorder, the reporter. He's telling this story right now. And he says, uh, and I'm praying today that it's not for you to be mentally ascending this thing, that you get in revelation of this. Can I tell you something? It may not look like it's working at first, but it's going to break, right? Your faith is going to grow. Each man, according to the word, has been dealt the measure of faith. But what we don't need to operate in is we don't need to operate in mental ascension. We need revelation. And the only way that you're going to get revelation through this is by hearing the word of God, by studying the word of God, by knowing the word of God so that your breakthrough can come. See, we partner for breakthroughs. We partner for breakthroughs. There's always some extension of faith. There's always something you got to do. We partner for breakthroughs. And they, these miracles that occur, occur because of some kind of partnership, us being in a can you tell, can I tell you a partnership or breakthrough could be something as simple as you going where God told you to go? As you going where God told you to go, as you being faithful, as you being obedient, as you doing the things, it could be just simply God telling you to be at Bible study on Tuesday or God telling you to show up at the grocery store at this particular time. And even though that you don't understand what God is asking you to do, that because you chose to be in faith and do what God said, you chose to obey him with your whole heart, you took the whole counsel, that God will do something significant for you just by you getting in position my God and trusting him and do it just by you getting up on the devotional this morning, just by you sharing the devotional this morning, just by you being faithful, just by you being in position. That's a partnership with God and God will do exactly what he said to do. So we see him with the lame man. He asked him what he would he like to get well. And he says, I can't sir." the sick man said for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets ahead of me. I want to focus on that right now. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk walk. Instantly, the man, he was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But the miracle happened on a Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders objected. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about troubling your own water. And I talked about this at Bible study. I don't want to go back over all the things that I covered last week. There were some specific things I said to you this past week. I already talked to you. We already talked about the fact that he was laying there sick for 38 years. And some of us have been in the same circumstance, the same situation. My God, the same situation the same circumstance, the same situation over and over again, been laying in that same state for 38 years in the same position. Apparently something was wrong because he was close to the temple. And the thing that I like significant about that, that means he was close to the church. Some of us been in the same church, going to the same church, of staying, studying the same word, praying some of the same prayers and nothing is happening and breakthrough should be coming and something should happen because hearing, because of hearing and because of doing and because that's what word, the word from Jesus told us to ask, seek and knock and he's going to answer. The Philippians tells us be anxious for nothing. Everything in prayer and supplication, make our requests known before God. And God is going to answer. God always has an answer for us. God is not going not gonna to leave or stay in his own state. He's not going to leave or stay in his own state. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how to trouble your water. So there's some things that had to happen. First of all, we recognize that he's on in his own state. The second thing we recognize that a miracle occurs. Something occurs when he encounters Christ. Something occurs when he encounters Christ. At the moment he encounters Christ, he's going. He goes from lame to be healed immediately. He goes from lame to being healed immediately. He goes from lame to being healed immediately. He goes from one circumstance to another circumstance immediately without no delay without no delays from the minute that he counters Jesus. So somewhere he's got revelation that the person that he's standing in contact with right now can change his life. The person he's coming in 
standing in contact with right now can change his life. And I'm telling you, the Jesus that you stand in contact right now can change your life. You don't have to wait on somebody else to put you in the water. You ain't got to wait on somebody else. You're going to trouble. I'm going to teach you how to trouble your own water. My God, I'm going to teach you how to trouble your own water. I'm going to teach you how to trouble your own water. So it's three things I want to give you, and then we're going to get out of here. Hebrews 11, 6 reminds us, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's gonna, impossible to please God. So there's going to be an action. There's going to have to be an action on your work. See, Moses then would have had what they had. Remember we talked about this this week? Moses then would have had what they had had they spoke to the rock and not struck, struck it. One, it's going to require your obedience. It's going to require you to operate in sound counsel. It's going to require you to be in wisdom. It's going to require you that you're not going to operate in this thing your way. You're going to have to make to make the decision today. You know what, Lord? I'm surrendering to you. I'm done trying to do things my way. I'm going to trust the counsel of your word. I'm not getting ready to walk around here. I'm not going to be begging you. I'm not going to be pleading you. I'm going to take the counsel of your word. It's going to take you uh, It's going to take you to make a decision to be consistent. You know what, Lord? I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to go to bed at night. I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to pay my tithes. I'm going to pay my offering. I'm going to I'm going to get with the assembly. I'm going to trust and honor the woman of God or the man of God that you put in my life. I'm going to stay consistent. I'm not going to keep wavering. I'm not going to keep playing with this thing. I'm not going to keep doubting this thing. I'm not going to keep living any kind of way and then coming back to you, begging you for grace and mercy. No, I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to stay consistent. And then I'm going to walk the strategies out that you've given me. The first thing I need you to do to trouble your waters is you're going to pray prayers of the word. You're going to pray the word. Some of you guys have probably have not been praying correctly. Angels, Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews 1 and 14, respond to the word. And they're the ones that do the work on here on earth. So you've got to pray the word. That's the first thing you got to do. You've got to pray the word of God. If you don't know what to pray, pray the word of God. And somebody's like, Lakeisha, what do you mean by praying the word of God? I'm going to give you an example. So say you need enlargement in your territory, right? You need your territory expanded. You need to grow in your business. Then you're going to pray the word of God. You're going to go over to Christ. Chronicles, you're going to find the prayer of Je Jabez, and you're going to say to the Lord, Lord, I need you to bless me indeed. I need you to enlarge my territory. I need you to increase my capacity. I need you to keep me from all harm that I do not cause any pain. That's how you pray the word of God. Say your issue is sickness. Then you're going to say, you're going to start praying the word. Say, Lord, already Jesus was bruised for my iniquities. He was chastised by my peace and by his stripes. He, I am healed. Can I tell y'all something? Um, for a long time, I suffered from an ulcer. Like from a long time, I suffered from an ulcer. And sometimes some simple Symptoms, my God, I don't have those no more, but sometimes some symptoms try to rise back up. And so immediately I lay my hand on my stomach and I start talking to my body. I say, absolutely not. Jesus already paid for the price for this thing. And by his stripes in the name of Jesus, I am healed. So you're going to have to learn how to pray the word of God. If you are fearful, right? If fear is coming upon you, you're going to pray the word of God. God is not giving me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. My God, I'm not getting ready to be fearful. If you're feeling anxiety come up, you're going to pray the word of God. Be anxious for nothing. Everything in prayer and supplication, making my requests known. My God, and he's going to answer you. So that's your first strategy. You're going to pray the word of God. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to remind God you're going to become God's secretary. This is my God. This is the strategy. These are the techniques, but you got to be consistent in it. You got to be faithful. You're going to become God's secretary. You're going to remind him in advance of what he said. Isaiah 62 and 6 says, put the Lord in remembrance of his promises. Keep not silent. Put the Lord in remembrance of his promises. Keep not silent. That's even a prophetic word that has been spoken to you. You're going to remind God of his promises. You're going to remind him of what he said. When your finances are looking funny, I talk to my wallet all the time. Look, <laughs> you're a giving wallet. I talk to my PayPal. I talk to my cash. Out. You're giving. Look, you're a giving situation. You are a giver. Luke 638 says, giving it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, run it over, shall men and women give into your bosom. You are a giver. And then I remind myself in Malachi, you said, Father God, you will rebuke the devourer for my sake, right? I'm a tither. I'm in covenant with you. I operate according to the laws. I operate according to the principles. This is you. I'm reminded. I become God's secretary. 
secretary. I'm reminding him in his word. This is what he said. And then I go back and pull prophecy after prophecy. This is what you said. This is what you told me to do. And because I left my job full time and I know that's what God told me to do. I'm over in Mark and I'm reminding him according to your word. You said to me. That anybody that leaves the gospel for my sake, that they will shall receive a hundredfold in this age. So I thank you for my hundredfold in this age. I know persecution is going to come, but I'm going to thank you for my hundredfold in this age. My God, this is the strategy. This is how you're going to trouble the waters, but you got to stay consistent. And then the last thing, you're going to praise him like you got it always. Praise does something. There needs to become a worship. I'm praying today that the worshiper in you wake up, that the worshiper in you, and we know that's you being obedient, but that's also you extolling him, you blessing him, his name, you praising him and you thanking him like you already got it. You praising him and you thanking him like you already got it. Being in faith cannot tell you what praise does praise puts it in faith so even when the enemy the standard is coming in the enemy is coming up you just start praising lord i thank you for it i thank you you've answered my prayers i thank you you give me favor i thank you father god that favor goes before me i thank you father god financially you're turning this thing around i praise and bless your name father god i thank you father god you're putting me in the path of the people i need you just begin to praise him for the circumstance of the situation you've already prayed you've already talked about it you've already done it but you're just going to begin to bless his name, Father. I thank you that I lack nothing, Father God. I thank you that you're daily loading me with benefits, Father God. Even for those of you, can I tell you something? There's even for those of you that desire a mate, I'm going to help some of y'all out. Uh, Genesis 2 and 8 reminds us that God, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. So he made a suitable mate. I am a suitable mate. Praying those things thanking God and blessing his name in advance. God, I praise you. I thank you that this is already working out. I thank you said you would supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. I thank you, Father God, that healing is a part of my benefit package. And just continue to praise him like you already got it. Even when the situation rises up and you look stressed out and you look up and it looks like it's not working, just start praising him. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you. Even if you ain't got no car, just sit and pretend and act like you're driving a car. Father, I thank you for my car. Father, I thank you for my car. Our Father, I thank you for my car. Even if you don't feel like it, something will break. See, praise. Our Father return, responds to praise. He's going to praise. He's going to respond to your praise. It's going to shake things up. It's going to give his get his attention. The word already told us, the psalmist already said, enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. As a matter of fact, you should use praise on the first end to get his attention, to wake daddy up. You should use praise on the fact, you should go into his courts with praise before you intercede, before you petition him. Praise should be on your front end and praise should be in your back door. <laughs> praise should be in your front end and praise should be in your back door. It should, close, it should open a thing up and it should close the thing out. Those are my strategies for you. Those are the strategies for troubling your own water. So if you've been in the same circumstance, you've been in the same situation, the same thing has been manifest, it's time for you to trouble your waters. My God, it's time for you to trouble your waters. It's time for you to operate in faith. I want to read Hebrews 11 and 6 to you, and then we're going to get out of here. I want to read Hebrews and 11 and 6 to you, and then we're going to get out of here. I want you to trouble your own waters. You trouble your waters. Here it is. It says, um, it says it was by faith and it goes in there and it says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists. And then he rewards those who sincerely seek him. When you sincerely seek God, he's going to reward you sincerely necessarily seek God, being obedient, being consistent, not seeking his stuff, seeking him. Lord, I want your ways. Lord, I want your ways. Lord, I want to operate in what you call me to operate in. Lord, I want your glory. Holy Spirit, I want you to operate through me because can I tell you something? What happens next is when the lame man gets up, he becomes a testament for Christ. God isn't interested in you being lame for too long because you can't be a testament for Christ. Your miracle is what becomes the testament. 
Your miracle becomes the testament. Your miracle becomes the testament. And so the things that you need are really not for you anyway. They're for everybody you're connected to. So instead of just seeking him for things, just begin to seek his face, seek his presence, seek to operate in his will for your life. And God will begin to do a thing. Man, we got to get out of here. I'm way over time. I love y'all so much. I'm way over time. Just begin to seek him, begin to seek his face, begin to know his ways, begin to become familiar with him, stay consistent, stay obedient, and do the things that I share with you and watch God do something significant for you. That's how you trouble your own waters. You got to wait on no angel. You ain't got to wait on no pool. You ain't got to wait on no no circumstance. You ain't got to wait on no priest. You ain't got to wait on that. You just got to continue to seek his face and watch the glory of God move in your life. I love y'all so much. We need to do our confession and get out of here. Let's do our confession. Let's do our confession. Let's be consistent. Let's be consistent. Let's do our confession and we're going to get out of here. My God. I decree from this moment forward that I see myself the way God sees me. I'm highly favored of the Lord. I'm crowned with glory and honor. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm reigning as a king in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Now, in Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment and supernatural increase. I'm restored. I have petitions granted, laws, policies, and rules changed, and battles won, which I do not have to fight. Why all because of favor? The blessing and favor of God is on my life. In Jesus' name, every morning when I arise, I will speak and expect divine favor to go before me. Let it surround me as a shield with goodwill and pleasures forevermore. The doors are not open for me that men have said are not possible to open. No obstacle can stop me and no hindrance can delay me. In Jesus' name, I'm honored by my Father as I receive genuine favor that comes directly from God. I'm special to him. I'm the object of his eye, affect of his affection. I'm the apple of his eye and I'm blessed and highly favored in the Lord. And the Lord just told me to tell you it is working. <laughs> he just told me to tell you that. He said, let them know it's working. It is working. It is working. Some of y'all think it's not working. It's working. You're tearing down strongholds. You're demolishing. You're breaking. It's working. It's working. You just got to stay persistent. You just got to stay consistent. You just got to obey. You just got to be focused. I promise you it's working. It's working. And don't try to fake God out because you can't fake God out. You cannot fake God 